Welcome everyone. Today's video finds us over here east of Siam Reap. And as you can see behind me is basically just kind of a throwaway temple in this area. There's so many massive structures that all these small little temples like this are just kind of forgotten about and they just uh, kind of sit out here. Anyway, we're in a little bit of a different temple group today. I've, uh, I've left the main part, the Angkor group and all of that, and I've came over here east of Siam Reap. I'm over here at Bakong. And this, this area is also called uh, Rulios or something like that. It's uh, some of the first temples that were built here. And the temple we're gonna look at today is the Bakong Temple. And this is one of the first Khmer temples that are like the mountain temples made out of sandstone. And it is a ninth century. It was built in like the last couple decades of the ninth century. And it is absolutely massive. It has a humongous wall around it, it has a huge moat. And it was built by King Intravaraman the first and this was another city out here it wasn't Siem Reap back in the day it was Hariharalaya and uh, this was one of the old capitals and then they later on uh, one of his successors moved the capital from here over to the Angkor area so anyway we're going to take a look at this humongous temple and we're going to enjoy it and see what we see As you can see right here, this is an old temple here. It was made out of brick. So the brick is kind of disintegrating. They've came over here and braced it up to keep it from completely collapsing down. There was a little bit of sandstone used around the base and some of the figures and stuff like that, but most of it was just the brick. And in normal Khmer style, they have the like the fake doorways and stuff. This would have been open on this side where it's all completely collapsed down. And they did all the normal styling up to the top in this little prasat. So this was just right over here. And uh, right now, this is where you come and you park. And they have the locals that come over here and they offer you cold drinks. And they're uh, pretty nice. I mean, they, are pr they come over and they hustle to sell you something but they're generally really nice people. They're happy to see you and stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun. Anyway, let's walk over here to this temple. Now there's several other temples in this temple group and I haven't explored this area very much. I need to come and uh, kind of go around and look. I'm over here by my motorcycle, which is parked over here by that big tree. So it's uh, not too difficult to get over here. On my motorcycle is really easy. I just came down Highway 6 right out of CM Reap. If you uh, hire out a tuk-tuk, they can bring you over here. It's about 10 kilometers east of kind of like the bus station area, if you're uh, familiar with CM Reap. And they, they know where it's at. They'll, uh, they'll bring you over here and your tuk-tuk driver will wait like under the tree over there while you explore the temple. So this is the east entrance and this is the way I wanted to go in because most of these temples are orientated towards the east. Now it is part of the temple tour that you have to buy. You can buy a three day tour for $62 or a seven day pass for uh, $72. It's not a tour, it's just a pass that lets you in all of these. The tours you have to hire out on your own at your own expense also. So this would have been the Gopura here, would have been an entrance way. And you can see a little bit of the the building that's left, just the doorways and stuff like that. And this is the outer wall. And uh, this is what's cool about this, is just look at this massive, massive moat that was around here. And it's quite nice. The lilies are all bloomed out and the locals are sitting over here on the little mats. I've seen some monkeys and stuff on the, on the walls. So if the monkeys are around, uh, steer clear of those. They will like steal all your food and uh, they can bite you and stuff like that. So I, I find it best to just avoid the monkeys. And if they get on my motorcycle, they will tear like the seat apart and everything else. So this was a walkway. Now this isn't as large as like Angkor Wat and all of those that came later. This was an earlier era. This was ninth century. Thought this was kind of nice with these pink lily pads that are bloomed out here. You can see some fish and stuff jumping. 
Yeah, this is really, really nice. And the trees. So you can see what they've done here is they made this walkway out of those laterite stones. You see the trees that have kind of grown in and broken them apart. So they dug this moat and then they hauled in all the brick and they also lined all of this moat on this side here with these laterite stones. And the, you see the little kid over here and the lady, she's cutting all the grass and it's by hand here. Cambodia is, you know, it's cheaper to use labor than it is to have a machine. So you'll see these people out here cutting this grass with little machetes and little clippers. You can just see this naga. So they used the, uh, they put that plaster on top of it and they carved these designs in it. You normally don't see that with the, the design. And then you can see the naga head. And you see these, these would have been the balustrades here. This would have been the walkway. The later styling, they put the naga, they raised it up and these are down. It looks like it's just down on the ground. And then there's some more of the moat over here. So this is our destination. This is a mountain temple. And I'm pretty excited to see this. This is uh, one of the older style. And I really like that in the Khmer ruins. So we can see they got some modern buildings over here. But this is what we came for right here. This is a five-tiered mountain temple. Now that moat was like 400 by 300 meters across. And there's supposed to be like 22 satellite temples around here. And this is a temple that is dedicated to Shiva. So that was originally what it was. And they say it is like basically a prototype temple of one that was uh, built in Java. This, uh, there's some dispute about if it was Java from modern day Indonesia or if it was the Cambodian way of saying the Champa. They're not exactly sure. I'm kind of confused about that part of the history, but you can see here some of the brick prongs all around, and then we'll go up there and we'll eventually make our way up to that top tier. How fantastic is that? So the way in right here, you can see the sandstone. This would have been the Gopura, the little entrance way. You would have came in. They would have had the images here. You can see the laterite stones that are still here on the used to be the walls and how they carved all around the base. And there would have been another entrance over there that you would have came in. And then there's some of the smaller buildings over there. Now this was a ninth century temple. And whenever it was dedicated, you know, and then after they, uh, they moved the capital from here over to the site in Angkor, they, uh, they didn't completely abandon this temple. There's some additions that were added in the 12th and 13th centuries also. But now it's, uh, it's all abandoned, but they do have the modern part over here. We may look at that at the very end of the video. I wanna look at the, the old part first. But I really like the styling of the wall. It's kind of a simple design. It's the, the bricks down below, like this the rectangular or the cuboid bricks. And then they put these kind of uh, triangle shaped ones up on top. So you can see how they carved all of this sandstone here. They put little patterns down here all the way up. This would have had styling in it. And then here's the, here's the lines. Its head is almost completely gone. And then uh, you can see here. So this is the lintel. I'm not sure if that's Vishnu or who that is. But there's uh, a lot of the Hindu deities that will be here. And then you would have came in here and they would have had their uh, deity right here to worship. And then we're going to still get up there. We're still looking at these lower buildings yet. And over here you can see some more of the restoration that they've done with the faux door and these sandstone staircases that go up. So they'll have stairwells at the four cardinal directions, but there will only be the doors like on the east. I think uh, the ones to Shiva, when they're dedicated to that, are on the east. And I think uh, another one of the deities, they will open it up on the west. But, oh, this is so cool. 
the uh, this is almost like if you thought about it, it's almost like a like a footprint pattern. I know it's not, but it kind of reminds me of it. And then uh, we're coming up on the temple itself, so you can see those huge sandstone blocks that they used to build all the way up there. And right here, this is on the north entrance, and I think this figure here was a cow at one time. I know it's hard to tell, but I think that's what they did kind of on the north entrance. So you'd had a, a cow here, and then you'd have went up, and there would have been uh, like the lions or the elephants around the archway. Oh, and it does look like there are some elephants over there. And then you have the, the lions here on each way. And this would have been another little deity right here on each side. And then another one of these chetties here. And this looks the walkway up into the temple. We're almost back around over here to see these. And I'll have to be brief because I know that I have a tendency to just talk and talk and talk. <laughs> My videos will be like seven hours long at all of these temples. But I just enjoy it so much. It's pretty fun to be out here walking around and seeing all this stuff. Now the older like 9th and 10th century temples, they had a, quite a bit of a different design. They put a lot more of these buildings all around kind of on the like the bottom level. So you'll see that compared to the, the later, the Bayon style. Okay, so this is what I wanted to see here is these, I wanted to take a look at these square windows. You can see how both of them are. They would have both been similar style. All right, so that's all of this down here that I wanna look at. I'm sure I'll see something else interesting, but uh, let's go up it now. Uh, after uh, 30 minutes of me talking down here, walking around, <laughs> we'll go up to the, top of the Temple Mountain. Oh, there's more chetties over there that are just awesome. This is what I love about coming here to Cambodia is this stuff right here. It just still, I've been here several times and uh, I just walk around here. Some people tell me that they get temple fatigue where they've seen one temple and they've seen them all. Me, I just uh, can't get enough of it. I really enjoy walking around I don't know what all the figures and everything mean because it's uh, Hindu and I'm not a, that's not my religion, I'm not Hindu. But uh, I do like to look at the, the styling. All right, so this is it. You can see they would have had a lintel right there and this would have all been styled on the corners, but it's in pretty bad shape. You could just see a little bit of the stone carvings right there. And you could see the colonnades around the, the entranceway. These have been probably been added later on. And then we can see the stonework up here. And then you would have came into your first set of stairs. And you can see these are some big, huge sandstone stairs. And they're pretty even. Most of these temples you'll see, they're uh, a little precarious to climb up. You can see we have the lions on each level. So on the first tier, right here, you would see there would have been a lion here. And I have a nice look over there at that building. And you can see the lions on it also. And that would have been an elephant on that corner that's just down to the rubble. And there would have been an image carved in here. You can just see the top of what it would have looked like. And the same over here. But this is ninth century. This is really, really old. It's older than most of the stuff that you see in Angkor area. That elephant over there is collapsed down and another one of those buildings that are similar designed. So these all were balanced. So if they did something on the north, they had to do the same type thing on the south. And a lot of times they do it all on all four directions. So this is the second tier here. You can see the the lion, the tail, would have came right up behind his head. And then that elephant over there. I'm trying to find a nice elephant. We'll walk over to it. Looks like this one over here might be the best one. Just look at the size of this brick that they used. So they carved it and then they uh, chiseled it to fit into the little puzzle to keep it from shifting and collapsing. 
And what I was reading about is, you know, they learned how to make these temples from that uh, Java style temple from like the 800s. And then they, uh, they learned how to make it and then they've incorporated their own styling and everything else into these. So this is an elephant here. And we do have another one over there also that might be in a little better shape. But you can see here how they carved like the ropes. This one here, the tusk and everything is missing, but it would have had a tusks on it, but it had a trunk that would have came down to right there. And then it would have had the tail and all the ropes and everything. The little rope that goes right underneath the tail. It's so fantastic. We'll go up to the uh, next tier. And these are all the same. Looks like they're getting a little shorter as we go up each tier. And these are just open. And I don't know if they walked around on these. I know like the funeral processions, they would go around like the center three different times. And that was part of the ceremony. Oh, and we're getting up here and there's kind of these little tiny prongs all around. Looks like there's four here on this side and they're made out of sandstone. And they have uh, their little opening right here on the east side also. And you can see the stone carving in it. And right up there. Yeah, the stone work is really, really faded off of these. Just the centuries being exposed to the weather. And they've came in, you can see here where they got a piece of steel in there to keep this from collapsing down. Uh, I really like that. So it looks like there's a total of 12 of these around. And they're, it's all balanced. And then you see here, they would have had that all designed all the way around it. So this would have been quite beautiful to see back whenever it was uh, new. You can see the little figure there, like a little dancing guy. And then these are like the lotuses right here. And it would have been all the way around this temple. And then you can see the plaster work over here. There's just a little bit left in that sandstone. So we're all the way at the very top now. Now this little prasat right here, it reminds me of some that I've seen in Thailand. I was just looking at one in Surin that had a similar styling. Also some over around Sitep had the same, where it's kind of small on the bottom and then it goes up, kind of like the, the bloom of a lotus is kind of what it reminds me of. And you can see the lions that are here by the, the doorway. And then all of this again is all carved all around. And then they had some notches here. I don't know if this would have been like a covered doorway when you would have came up, but they carved those there. And you can see the figures around. And that lintel is in really bad shape right there. And I think that's Vishnu up there and you can see the Naga and that, that serpent god. You can just see the little bit of the tail. And then uh, they do have a place here. So they've made this into a modern little shrine. So you can see the Buddhists right there. And then I don't know if you'll be able to see in there. There's another one of those big deep holes. And they, this one here is closed. so. The weather doesn't get in here. You can see some more of the carvings. This all looks pretty new that they've touched up around the bottom. And you can see that whole scene up there for that lintel. And the sandstone is really wore down also right here. I mean, this was the first temple made out of sandstone, primarily here in Angkor. And then you have a nice little figure right there. I'm not sure what that is. You can see the legs. And one of the worker ladies, she's over here. It would have probably been that right there. Let's take a look at that. It looks like a small little lion. It is, it's a smaller version of the lion that's right here in the uh, 
on the sides of the entrance. You can see the difference in size here. I mean, this is just a partial one, but it's still the same. This is a nice look from up here. These temples have just taken so much work to restore them. Looks like it's always going on that they never are able to finish because the elements just disintegrate everything. But you see these little prongs here, they're in pretty decent shape. And then uh, compare that to one of these, this is just rubble. And then that one over there, they've done a lot of work in the brick. And while well, that one's just down to the base. So you can see the inner wall, then the moat, and then it has the outer wall. Okay, so let's go down this way. And I wanna look at a couple of these little elephants here, see if they're in better shape. It looks like they are, they still have the ears and stuff. We'll go down to that bottom one over there. It looks like at one point they might have had like a guardrail here around this, but it's all gone. I've seen some old temples that have had that where they put like a rail around. Okay, so here we are at this elephant. So you can see it is in a little bit better shape. It's still missing a, the tusk though, but you can see the ears right here and then its eye and down there that looks like part of the tusk that would have came down. And then you can see the, how they carved that all around there for the ropes and everything. This is the best gate here. This is on the west side right here. And you can still see a lot of the carvings that are left in it. And it had as a second level right there, but down there is where you come through. So this was just absolutely massive. And then the lion that's right here is completely gone. The same over here, you could just see the, the feet. And here we are down here. This is the west entrance. And it's the same as the east over there, the same length and uh, comes across that humongous moat. And one last little look here. You can see where they're renovating and then you can look up onto that mountain temple here. The elephants. Now, it is so hot here. I got over here first thing this morning. It's not even 10 o'clock and it is just scorching. So, I know at home you can't appreciate how hot it is, but I'm here and I am sweating and I can't even imagine being here and uh, moving these rocks around, chiseling them, doing all the stuff that they did, digging this moat, lining it with rocks, clearing it first. Uh, it would just been, everything about it is just work. And as you can see right next to the temple wall is the modern Khmer temple, another little Buddhist temple right here. We'll look in a couple of these things really quick. Looks like uh, there's some monks over there, and then they have this huge hall right here. So we have a monk over here. They're eating a little bit. And this is the place for the monks to eat, and they do the ceremonies, it looks like, over here. And then you can see, this is quite a bit different than what you would see in a Thai temple. These are still the scenes of the Jataka, but the, uh, the openness of this the Thai temples will usually close this off. They've done it on one wall. I have a picture of the old monks and stuff. And then this is the main image right here. These are some modern murals. The styling is nice. Okay, let's, there's another building. Maybe it'll be open also and we can look in there. This is the last little building over here. Lots of paintings. So this is their version of their ordination hall, it looks like. Yeah, some really nice murals. And I don't know the age of this temple at all. I didn't see any information about it because everything you read about is about that old ninth century temple. Yeah, this is a pleasant little surprise here. So they'll do the chanting and everything here I really like these paintings. These are quite cool. So it looks like they're Sema stones. That's what these are. They do them inside instead of on the outside of the building. And you can see the different style of the, the Buddha. Much different than the Thai face that you'll see. And then uh, they've done it all around here. 
And then they have their little relics and stuff in here. And then some more of the SEMA stones and then just all painted up. And he's sitting up there on his, on the little throne. So that's gonna finish our video over here at Bakong Temple. This is amazing. This is really, really nice. Now this is styled after the Boropudur Temple that's in Java. And that was uh, one that's a little bit older than this. I've never been to that temple. I would uh, probably like to go visit it one day. I haven't ever been to Java Island. I've been to Indonesia, but not to Java. But uh, that's definitely on my list of places to go. This temple is fantastic. It's uh, ninth century, and this was the old capital over here before they moved it. And it wasn't the capital for very long, but it was the capital of the Khmer Empire for a while. This is uh, off the beaten path as far as it goes over here in Angkor. The tours don't come over here. You can get a tuk-tuk and come over here or figure out your own transportation to get over here. It's not far. It's like uh, 10 kilometers east of Siam Reap and uh, definitely worth your time. I would recommend getting over here and uh, seeing this if you get a chance. I've enjoyed walking around. I like these mountain temples. They're quite cool. As you can see behind me, just uh, the massive, massive wall. <laughs> just, it's still just mind boggling. So anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, make sure you smash like and uh, leave me a comment down below. If you've been here or if you have any questions, ask me in a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or if you know more information than I do, feel free to tell me in a comment. That way other people that watch the video, they can learn a little bit about it also. And uh, subscribe if you're new here. And until next time from over here in Siem Reap, remember life is a journey. Until next time, enjoy.